All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to another Penn State Alumni Association paint night. Go ahead and drop in the chat where you're joining us from this evening. If at any point you have questions or some comments, please feel free to put them in the chat or you're welcome to come off of mute to ask a question. We do ask that you try to remain on mute throughout the event unless you have a question just to make it a little easier for everyone to hear Jackie. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to her and feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Thanks. Oh, wow. I'm just watching all these different places fly in in the chat coming from all over the East. It looks like the East coast, Pennsylvania, all over Pennsylvania, lots of New York. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me um, again. Um, I think I see some familiar faces up there in your living rooms and in your kitchens. Uh, so thanks for, thanks for having me again, as Abby mentioned, please uh, do uh, drop questions in the chat. I do my best to try to keep an eye on it to see what's going on out there if you need any help. Um, and hopefully Abby will catch anything that I miss. I do, uh, it always happens that I, that I go very quickly more than, I, I try to slow down, but if I do get too fast, just tell me to slow down in the chat and I will do my best there. Um, some of you, I think, are probably ready and all set up, but just in case you aren't, I'll let you know that I've got my usual fancy box lid palette here, okay? Um, and as per usual, I'm working with white, black, and the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. You might also have at your disposal um, pre-made green, um, pre-made orange, any any, any of that is totally fine, okay? Um, and yes, there is there is a recording available after. I see a question there, and I always forget where it is made available, but it will it will happen. And maybe Abby can um, type in the chat or say where that recording will be. Um, archived on the on the alumni website for you. So yeah, if you can only stick around for a little bit. Uh, don't worry, it, the recording will be available. All right, um, so paint colors, again, white, black, and the three primary colors. You might have orange and green too, and that's fine. Um, we're gonna use a lot of white because we're actually gonna cover the canvas in white paint um, to start. I'm, I have a, a, a flat wide brush, about an inch or three quarters of an inch flat brush. That's my go-to, and then a smaller brush of any kind will do. Um, what else do I have? I have a mug of water to rinse my brush. I've got paper towels here all set. And of course I got my canvas, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna do the old switcheroo here and put my, well, before I do that. Um, so as I mentioned, we are going to cover the canvas in white paint first. And we're doing that because we're gonna work on all of this background which is um, a building, the, you know, the, the actual, I forget the name of it, but the actual creamery building is back there in, in the background. We want it to really fade in the background. So we want to cover this painting with white paint so we can blend some of those colors like grays and um, bricks and blues in the back. Um, and those will blend nicely with white paint. Also, it's kind of a nice little warm up especially if you've never done this before. Painting can be kind of intimidating, but if we're just covering the canvas in white paint, it's a nice little warm up to get rolling. So I've just got my flat wide brush here. And I'm just gonna cover this whole canvas in white paint. And don't be shy here. Again, we're covering the canvas. We want to get blendy, as I say, so we don't want that white paint to dry. So go ahead and be generous there. In case you're wondering, I'm just working with, um, I think it's the Artist Loft paints from Michaels. It's the lowest level possible, pretty much. And it's a very, I think, easy to use acrylic. Some of your paints might be a bit thicker, but this is pretty, pretty watered down and goes on pretty easy. But again, 
don't be shy here. Just want to cover that canvas up and get ready to do lots and lots of blending. And with any kind of blended background that's really kind of pushing to the far, far distance, we don't want to worry too much about perfection and does this actually look like a building? All we want to get is, and I'll use the term, a suggestion of a building or whatever it is back there in the distance. So we don't want to fret too much about things looking exact. I will tell you that the photo I was referencing certainly does not look like my finished product, or I guess I should say the other way around. My painting does not look like the photo <laughs> I was referencing. All right. And um, if we were in person together, I would remind everyone to kind of uh, hold up their canvas, move it around in the light to see if you've missed any spots. It is, well, maybe not for you, but for me, it's a fun challenge to see if I can cover up white on white. Right, I might need to give myself some more white at some point. All right. So I've covered up my canvas, but I am going to grab my bottle of white here just in case I need it. And then again, in case, if anybody's curious, these are the whoops, these are the paints that I always use when I'm teaching the artist loft. I guess it's academic level one. So I think there is an even lower version uh, under this one, but this is you get these nice quart bottles at Michael's. All right, so hopefully we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm just gonna totally sneak a peek at all of your kitchens and dining rooms and things. Um, I think I think a lot of us are still working, but I, I can kind of talk a little bit more. Um, so we've got that nice wet um, white background. And if we look at our canvas, I'm going to focus on these gray, this gray block right here. Let me try to get this on the thing. So this gray block here is part of my building and another gray block over here is part of my building. Again, I'm not going to get all sorts of concern about what specific piece of this building is. I just want to give the suggestion of some structures back there. So I'm just going to grab, oh, and I still have my brush. It's got that white paint on it. That is totally fine. I actually want that white to be there. Um, and if you are joining us for the first time, um, I will say this, and this is what I say almost ad nauseum. I repeat myself all the time. Um, a little bit goes a long way. You can always add more paint. It's harder to take it away. So for that gray, I'm just going to grab this is a technical terms, a smidgy smooch of black paint. Oops, there I am. That's just a little smidgy smooch, little gray on the corner of my brush with all that white on there as well. And with that little smidgy smooch, I'm going to start to paint the suggestion. And that goes on really hot. That's really dark and I can move that gray around. I'm gonna to start to add the suggestion of this gray wall. Just gonna move that around. Let me step out of the shot, out of the, the light here to get out of the shadow. And I'm just going to place that right there. So um, I would say that that's kind of midline and then over to the left a bit, several inches. And this looks like there's a little divot there, but it doesn't matter. But I basically got this rectangle right here and that's just gray from that little smidgy smooch of black. All right, I'm gonna grab some more white on my brush so I don't go in too hot. As the canvas, uh, as that white paint is drying, 
uh, it'll get um, harder and harder to blend. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more white on my brush, grab another smidgy smooch of that black. Oh, that's barely there, but that's perfect. That little smidgy smooch of black. And I'm gonna add a little horizontal rectangle over here. Again, not perfection. We're just giving the suggestion of architecture, I'll say. <laughs> giving the suggestion of architecture of back here. You want a little bit of a darker look, then you can just grab a little bit more of that black. And just giving, whoops, little black snuck up on me. And if you um, are looking at your canvas and you're like, wow, that black did go a long way and I didn't realize it, um, just, you can grab some more white and just blend right over top. But we do want this background to remain pretty light because we wanna make sure that our uh, nitty line can sit nicely on top of all that paint. All right, now for this brick, brick-like color hanging out over here on the left side and in the upper corner over here, you can see it hiding behind the foliage. I still got that white paint on my brush, I have a little bit of that gray going on and that's totally fine. Um, in my palette, in my fancy palette here, I'm just gonna grab a little smidgy smooch of red and I'm gonna smudge that, another technical term, smudge that around in my bristles here, okay? And with a little smidgy smooch of black, I can kind of get this brick, this muted brick color. All right, and I'm gonna wipe off excess paint from my brush because I don't wanna go in too hot. And again, just giving the suggestion of architecture back here in this brick. Ooh, and I'm looking at the screen and that looks very gray, but in real life, it is looking more red than gray. So I'm gonna try to add a little bit more red so it'll show up for you guys. So again, that is just white, smidgy smooch of red, smidgy smooch of black. And with this bricky color, you can even, if you want, play around with a little smidgy smooch of yellow added in to get it a bit more orangey. Again, the name of the game here is keeping this background really, really light, very, very faded. I'm gonna add this brick color up to my upper right-hand corner. Just moving my chat over here so I can see. All right. Oh yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the, the screen right now and this gray section right here appears much darker than it is in real life. So I might try to, fade that out so it doesn't look too dark for you guys. It's amazing how things look so different on uh, the video. All right, but again, I'm just gonna grab some more of my brick color, a little bit of white, smidgy of red, smidgy of black, smidgy of yellow. And by now my white paint underneath is much drier, so I'm not blending as well as I was. And that might bother you, it might not, but if you want it to be smoother and more blended, you can just go ahead and grab some more white. All right. And actually with this very light brick color, at this point, it's probably helpful to give ourselves a little um, guideline to see where things are in space. So for me, my guideline is this very sketchy um, line. It's just showing me that this is where those shrubs are going to be along the bottom here. So that, that little sketchy line down there is just a heads up to myself that that's where 
those shrubs are going to be. Okay, so I'm just kind of giving myself that space so I know kind of where things are going to start to hang out in this composition here. All right. And there's that line. Again, that's where my, my shrubs are going to go. Really is amazing how dark this looks over here. I'm tempted to add Well, that looks really bizarre on the video now. Hmm. All right. All right, so to recap, we've covered the canvas in white paint. We've got a smidgy smooch of black and white to give this very, very light gray to give suggestions of architecture in the back. Okay, and our one uh, kind of last little thing for the background is this very, very pale blue section back here. Again, I don't even know what that is. I think it's, I don't know, some sort of architecture. Maybe it was an umbrella that I decided to just swoosh over as light blue. Um, but that's what I'm going to work on right now. Just grab some white, smidgy smooch of blue. And I'm just going to swoop that in over here. And I didn't even, I didn't even clean my brush yet because at this point, the colors mixing together really doesn't bother me at all. Just going to kind of swoosh that in. Again, just the suggestion of architecture in the background. A lot of this is going to get covered with foliage, an umbrella, and of course, the Nittany Lion himself. So we don't want to get too wrapped up in, oh gosh, this doesn't look right. Really doesn't really look like anything at this point, to be honest. All right. So this is kind of what I'm looking at right now. Doesn't look like much of anything. <laughs> so if you're if you're feeling this doesn't look like anything, then you are doing it right. All right, I see a lot of folks busy, busy at work. Love it, love it. All right, I'll take a little pause here as people are kind of finishing up their work. At this point in the game, um, because we're still working very, very lightly, meaning our colors are very, very light, we we have a lot of freedom to play around with uh, the composition. So in other words, where where is the Nittany Lion in space here? Where is he going to be sitting? Um, so our next step is we're going to kind of sketch out the basic shape, the basic silhouette of the Nittany Lion, just so we know whereabouts he's going to be. And because we're doing it with such a light, light color at this point, we have a lot of freedom. We can relax a little bit. We don't have to commit to anything just yet. We're just kind of planning things out um, so we can work around him. All right. So to sketch out, to plan out the basic shapes for him, I still got that um, very, very muted white mixture on my brush. But what I've done is grabbed a little smidgy smooch of red, little smidgy smooch of yellow. Um, and I'm just going to make this as light as I can, as light as I can, again, because I want to be able to kind of sketch and not commit. All right, so this is what I've got on my brush right now. It looks very white at this point, but I promise you there is a little bit of uh, red and yellow in there. Okay. And with this color, I'm going to start sketching out our Nittany Lion. So for me, I want to make sure that his head is exactly where I want it. Okay. And then everything, his body can follow from his head. 
Um, I don't want to start with his legs because I inadvertently might not give myself enough room at the top for his head. But once we get the head down, that kind of dictates where everything else is going. I have done a lot of talking. Hopefully I've given um, folks time to catch up. Um, again, I've got that very light color on my brush that is white with a smidgy smooch of red and yellow. And I'm first going to sketch and I'm going to hold, hold him over here to help me. I don't know if you can't see that maybe. Well, I'm going to sketch his head, okay? And what are we looking at? Well, it's basically an oval, okay? Just the outline of his head. And it's he's got that square uh, bottom for his jaw. But that's the basic, basic shape I'm going for here, okay? And he's kind of off, off center. So I'm gonna say, ooh, right over here. Oh, and I may actually, I should make this darker so you can actually see it. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of black and a bit more red. So again, I'm just gonna darken this just so you can see it on the screen, but yours certainly does not have to be this dark. So I've got, I'm gonna start with this ovally type thing. Yeah, I think that, that works. And I'm gonna make sure his, Jaw is kind of square at the bottom there. Something like that. All right, something like that for his head. Again, I'm doing mine much darker just so you can see it. Hopefully it's easier to follow along. All right. And now I'm going to draw his upper body shape which is basically a rectangle. So if you look at the screen now, I'm just kind of tracing his upper body as a rectangle, okay? That actually goes right through the bottom of his head. So I'm gonna sketch that like this. I'm literally gonna go right through the bottom of his, of his face and kind of bring that down. to here, something like that. So that's his torso. And again, we're sketchy right now, meaning we're just planning things out. We're using a very, very light color paint. So we can, we can make mistakes here. We can plan things out and not worry about going too far. Like, oh no, I don't like this line. Well, that line is, it's fine because it'll disappear. So just ignore that little smudge over there. I was just making a point. <laughs> All right. So to recap, oval head, square bottom for that um, jaw. He's got a nice open smile. So his jaw is square down there. Okay. Then his torso, I sketched in this rectangle right here. All right. And he's sitting on this ledge. Well, he's sitting on this ledge. So I'm just gonna bring out his legs here and here, like here, like here, something like this. Again, not worried about perfection at this point, just kind of planning him out. And we can again play with play with the details of him and his costume later, just kind of planning things out. All right. How are we doing so far? Thumbs up if you're still alive, still with me. <laughs> Thumbs down if you're like, what have I done? It's okay. It's okay, I promise. If this is your first time joining us, first time painting, um, anyone here who's done before can assure you that in the middle of it, things don't look good. But then the next day when you look at it, you're like, oh, hey, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. But when we're in the middle of it, we see everything that we think is wrong with it. We see all of our quote unquote mistakes. But I promise you when it's all done, things kind of magically come together. All right, oops, I just made the chat really large. What did I, 
do that. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I've got his head sketched out. I've got his torso sketched out, his legs. Okay. Now let's get his arms. Okay. Both of which are bent. So one is holding the ice cream and one is kind of pointing at, pointing at us directly. All right. So notice that his elbow over here is a bit lower than the one over here. All right. So I'm going to start with this elbow on the right over here. Oh, I'm going to bring it out something like this. About that. Yeah, something like that. And then again, the elbow on the left side is right. Elbow on the left side is a bit higher as that forearm is coming more towards us. So something more like that. And just because I can't help myself, I am going to add a little circle or sphere for his fist as it's pointing to us on that left side, his right. And then another little sphere over here for his other hand, okay? Again, those little spheres are just kind of giving myself a heads up as to where those things are gonna land in the composition, okay? Again, don't fret at this point. It looks really wonky. It looks totally strange. It doesn't look like anything at this point. Um, in fact, once I put those two spheres there, it kind of looks like eyeballs. So it thinks things are gonna look really strange at this point. And that's exactly right, okay? All right, quick recap. We did the head. It's an oval with a flat bottom. We did the torso. It's a rectangle. We've added some legs down here. The silhouette of those legs. Added a little corner here for an elbow, little corner here for an elbow, and two balls for the hands, okay? And guess what? We can take a breath and put that Nittany Lion um, aside for the moment so we can work on more of this background. And I promise you, this is a nice, a nice time to relax a little bit as we work on the background. Okay, so part of my background are these trees that are popping in over here and this umbrella. And there's another umbrella back here, but we can't see the top of it because of the bigger umbrella. But what I wanna focus on are these, you know, the umbrella, uh, what do you call those, poles? And then the branches of these trees, those, those are all the same color. It's a kind of dirty gray or a brown, okay? And to do that, to do that, all I'm gonna mix is white, red, and black until I get something that I like, okay? So again, I love this painting because I'm barely gonna wash my brush. <laughs> um, so I still have all that nonsense on my brush. I'm just gonna grab some more white, little smidgy of red, little smidgy of black. And if it looks too much like gray, dark gray, I can add some more red. It's still looking a little bit gray, and a little bit more red. Oh, a little touch of yellow, why not? All right. So again, this is kind of a brown gray um, and you can use any brush at this point. I'm gonna use my, um, my same flat brush here. Depending on the quality of your flat brush, you should be able to get a nice edge with just, where am I? There I am, with the tips of those bristles, okay? So I've got a nice edge and I'm just gonna hold my brush perpendicular to the canvas. Um, just so I'm using the tippity tips of those bristles, okay? And I can start to pull in these branches that have just been kind of hanging out in the background. I've got, um, if I'm looking at the original here, there's a tree in the background that looks like he's popping out of his shoulder there. So I can 
Get some branches going on back there. Trees are great to paint because you don't have to worry about the branches too much. A lot of them are just going to get covered by some foliage. So don't fret too much there. Something like that. Oh, I wonder if I turn on my lights, will that look better? Let's see. Oh, well, I can see better now, but <laughs> it still still looks a lot darker on that on that video screen. Okay, there's my tree branches. And just because, let's see, it looks like I've got like three, three main branches coming off of his shoulder, three little branches coming out the left side of the canvas. Just because I've only got those doesn't mean you can't add more or have fewer if you so choose. Totally up to you. All right, and then also let's throw down those um, umbrellas, the poles of those umbrellas, something like that, something like that. All right. Again, not really looking like much of anything, but we're going to we're going to do some magic here in a second. All right. So once I've got those um, branches all settled, I am, for me, the first time going to wipe off any excess paint off of my brush. And I'm going to give that brush a nice, good, clean rinse. Because for my next move, I'm going to use um, clean white, pure white. So I want my brush to be nice and clean. So again, to recap, I've thrown down some branches. I'm throwing down um, two umbrella poles. Uh, we're only going to see the, the canopy of one umbrella, but there is that other little guy hanging in the background. And at that point, I can wipe off any excess paint from my brush and then give my brush good clean rinse. I see someone is joining us from Hershey, so I have to show you that I have my Hershey's special dark mug to rinse my water or to rinse my brush. Always a good idea to wipe off any excess paint on a paper towel first, and then give your brush a rinse. It extends the life of your water and the life of your brushes. As we're talking about saving the life of your brushes, um, this is definitely a do as I say, not as I do, because I definitely don't remember to do this. But when you are cleaning your brushes, you don't ever want to dip your brush lower um, or past the, the metal, gosh, what do you call this thing? The sleeve, the metal sleeve. So you don't ever want water to get down in here. That's where it becomes a problem and your bristles pop off. All right, blah, 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 blah. I've just cleaned my brush. I'm going to go into some clean white paint. Why? Well, because I just want to, I want to prime this canopy in white. All right, so that's the tippity top of my um, umbrella over here. And I'm just going to very quick and dirty block out this canopy in white. I'm not concerned about perfection. Again, the main the main focus of this painting is the Nittany Lion, right? So all this stuff going on in the background, I'm not I'm not worried about it being perfect. I kind of like it as a very um, sketchy, painterly kind of look. All right. So there's my little canopy. 
for my umbrella. Something like that. And I'm gonna let that uh, sit before we do the blue. And I'm just gonna wipe off any excess white from my brush. And I'm gonna start mixing a green. So for me, green means blue plus yellow. For you, it might mean that you have um, some straight pure green to use. Um, and as, and I'm mixing up this green for my foliage. And whenever I do foliage, I do like to play around with different kinds of green. So feel free to add more blue than yellow, more yellow than blue to get those different kind of shades of green. I can show you, I got I'm working on this little corner up here in my palette. And um, if you have a paper or paper plate, something that you can give a little test run on, uh, just kind of give a little test with your brush to figure out what kind of brush stroke you want to use to get your foliage. So you can absolutely do um, a tap, 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 like I'm demonstrating here, kind of moving the brush around, around, tap, 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 tap. Or you can do kind of criss, crisscrossies. There's really no wrong way um, to do this sort of thing. It's really what, what your preference is. But I am going to mess around with different shades of green to help give it some, some depth and interest especially because that's looking very, very light. And I want that green to come out a bit more. Oh yeah, I like that. It's a nice darker green there. And if you're looking at your green and it's looking kind of like an unnatural, <laughs> like, Atomic neon green. You can always tone down green with just a smidgy of gray. So that's a smidgy of black and white. That will tone it down a bit. And if you want a darker green, you can just add a little bit of black as well. And I do love to do that. So you'll see me doing that as well with my foliage. And you'll notice that I do get quiet when I'm painting trees, just kind of, I kind of get lost in it. And I love kind of just seeing, oh, that's a very dark green. <laughs> I love kind of playing around with those different shades. Oh, I kind of like that green though. It is a lot darker than the original I've used, but I kind of dig it. So yeah, just have fun playing around with this foliage. Mm -hmm. I realize I kind of covered up a lot of my branches over there on the left, that's all right. That's okay, I can always fill that in again. that something like that all righty just gonna take a little look around yeah feel free to put your video on because i do like kind of creeping around seeing into your houses but mostly to look at your paintings. So yeah, if anyone wants to share what their painting looks like, I'm gonna take a little peek right now if you wanna hold it up. And I'm just kind of scrolling. So if I miss you, oh, this is my favorite part. I love looking at them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. You know, this is my favorite part. Oh my gosh. I love it. Oh, that makes me so happy. They look so good. Love it. Love it. Love it. These are so fun. Oh my gosh. Love it. Love it. It makes it all worth it. Love it. Love it. So fun. All right. So I'm just going to kind of pause right here. See if people are kind of catching up. Um, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I just can't help myself play around with some of these greens. I just can't help it. Get some more of this yellow in here, maybe. Oh, that was brown. Watch out. Right. I think that works. Mm -hmm. All right. Also with this green, um, I'm going to put up the original here. Um, with this green, I'm going to mark where this ledge is that he's sitting on. Oh, my hand's in the way. So what I'm indicating right now is this ledge. He's sitting on this like short wall. And I'm just going to, with that green, I'm going to draw this line right here. And that's going to tell me where, where the... The wall he's sitting on begins and then where that that shrubbery behind him starts okay so again this is the line that i'm going to draw right now with green just to give you an idea so on my working canvas that's right about here oops something like that Alrighty. So once I've got that blocked out, then that means that I can start filling this in with um, a green shrubbery color and over here as well. So I'm just going to do that kind of quick and dirty so you can see how we're basically slowly closing in on um, all the white space on our canvas. And again, this kind of helps me see where everything exists in space. And then for me, behind this shrub, we, we are seeing sort of the, the, what do you call it? I guess it's just like the brick pavement in that background. And here's where I get really, um, <laughs> I go really heavy on the artistic license. And this is my way of saying, I'm not gonna worry about what's actually there. Maybe there were tables, maybe there were people, and I'm just gonna cover that up with this, this very, uh, uh, what's the word? Kind of muted dark color. So it can be whatever, I, I want it to be. So with that, I can uh, grab a little bit of red and black and kind of get that dark muted color. And if that's too dark, I can always add a little bit of white there.
And everybody's everybody's composition is going to be, obviously everybody's painting is going to be different. But with this one, everybody's composition is going to be different, meaning the, the placement of shapes on the canvas will be different. So don't, don't fret if yours is looking different than mine. Um, just do what is working for you on your on your canvas. Because even though we are painting together, it's it's impossible to paint duplicates. I mean, and who would want to, right? We all want to paint our own our own adventure here. All right. I'm basically pausing here in terms of progressing, but I am gonna just play around with some green foliage again, just because I can't help myself. But hopefully that'll give folks the chance to catch up if they feel like they need to catch up. Um, I haven't been paying attention to the chat, so hopefully I haven't missed anything. It looks like we're good there. And again, if I am going too fast, there's always the recording that you can watch on the alumni website later on. So again, I'm just kind of playing around with my greens here, just because I can't help myself. It's one of my favorite things. Paint, with any kind of foliage. Foliage is so forgiving. You know, oh, it's green? Yep, that's a leaf. Right? All righty. Oh, actually, something else that we can do at this point, if you are um, ready for a next step, is the wall that he's sitting on. We can just, we can hit that up with a gray, a light gray, or even um, a gray plus yellow to give it like a sandy color. So that is something that I'm going to do right now. Because then once we cover that, essentially we've covered the whole canvas except for the lion himself. I'm just going to rinse my brush here. And again, after playing around with my foliage, I can fill in this little um, triangular wedge of that wall that he's sitting on. And again, for me, that's just kind of gray or even a sand color. So gray plus a little bit of yellow. Yeah, I think that works. That works. Right. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna take a pause here, see how everyone's doing. If anybody wants to hold it up, I see a lot of people are working hard. Looking good, team. Looking real good, team. Very nice. I love it. Awesome. Nice. Oh, these are looking so good. 
Love it. Love it. Oh, I love the dancing happening in the back there, Karen Hitchcock. That's great. <laughs> Somebody's twirling, twirling back there, and I love it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll take a pause here for about a minute or two as I see people are, are still working. All right. If you could just give me a thumbs up, either like if I can see you, give me a thumbs up, or if you're not showing your video, give me a little thumbs up icon, just to indicate that you're ready to rock and roll to our next step. So I don't want to go ahead too, too fast. If we're not all ready. All right. We'll take about one more minute again. Yeah, so just, just about one more minute before we get rolling onto our next move. Alrighty, I think most of us are ready to roll. So before we actually attend to our um, lion, I do want to take care of the canopy of the umbrella. So if we look at the model here, um, this blue is pretty dark. And with the blue that I have, um, I need to add a little smidgy smooch of black to get that dark blue color. So um, I can show you what straight blue for me looks like. Um, so here's kind of one panel. Um, and a little thing down there. And then another panel coming down here. So this is a very, very bright blue. And hey, you might like that. But for me, I wanted it to be just a little bit darker. So I do add a little smidgy smooch of black um, to my blue. So that is what I'm going to do right now, just to take care of that. Really is kind of amazing. That looks practically black. 
go. Alrighty, something like that. Whoops. <clears throat> Alrighty. So once that canopy is taken care of, we are going to start to fill in, finally, fill in our Nittany Lion, who right now looks like some strange, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, Picasso-like uh, thing <laughs> sitting on, on that ledge there. All right, so um, I've got all that dark blue on my brush. I am gonna wipe off any excess paint there and give my brush a good clean rinse. All right. And then with a clean brush, the base color of my lion, meaning the color I'm just gonna fill in everything with is actually just a light orange, okay? It might seem a little weird, but he is just a light, light orange to start with, okay? And then as we go, we're just going to add highlights and lowlights to give him a bit more um, depth. And the cool thing about this painting is because we have um, our sketches of lines here and even some of our background grays, um, that's gonna help blend in with that orange to make it not look so kind of insane. Like, of course the Nittany line isn't orange, um, but the way we've painted this is gonna help give him some depth. So hopefully I've talked enough for people to catch up <laughs> if they needed to. Um, but with my clean brush, I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with, um, an orange. So some red and some yellow, and I'm going to play around with those in differing amounts, depending on, um, what I want. That's looking a little bit too red for me. And you can even add a little smidge of white if it's just looking like atomic to you and you're like, ah, that can't be right. All right, um, let's see. So I've got something like this on my brush. It looks kind of peachy. So orange and yellow, a little bit of white, okay. And um, very much opposite of how we started this painting where I said, oh, be generous with that white paint. I'm gonna say, hang back a little, be a little bit more conservative um, because we wanna, we wanna have a bit more control over what's going on with this, with this Nittany line. So blah, 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 blah. I've done lots of talking. I wanna try to get this. I'm gonna try to, I might have to futz around with my color here, guys, only because I don't want it to look so weird on the video for you that you think you're doing something wrong if it doesn't look like mine. All right. So I've got this peachy orange color and I'm just gonna fill in everything in my Nittany Lion. And even now we're not, we're not worried about perfection, but I will say, I think it's, it'll make our lives easier if you don't go too heavy with the paint. You can see my, my paint is really sketchy right now. When I say sketchy, I mean that we're we're seeing that um, what should I call it? We're seeing the texture of the canvas, all right, and that's okay with me. I just want to fill in everything that is Nittany Lion here. All right, let's give this poor guy some arms.
something like that. And again, don't don't fret too much about um, things not looking right, quote unquote. Or if he does, if he doesn't even look like a nittany line yet, um, he probably wouldn't look like a nittany line at this point. So don't worry about that. The great thing about the way we're going to paint him is that we are going to do some of this outlining. So if you look at the screen, you'll see the model that I'm working with. Um, a lot of this darker outlining will give us the control to kind of fix any weird things that we're not too happy with, okay? So that little outlining will, will give us that control back when we're like, ah, I, I don't know what's going on here. This doesn't look like a the lion, okay? So that's where we're headed. But right now, I've just got this, <laughs> this crazy, this crazy looking thing on my canvas right now. Okay. And I've got, um, again, he's not solid. I've got some things mixing and blending through. And for me, I, I like that. I don't mind it. I like that he's kind of sketchy. Okay. All right. So speaking of those, um, well, actually, let me go to, to the chat because here's where things get a little crazy. Maybe we need help. No, oh, I don't see any questions there. Let's see. Looks like we're still working. So I'll take a minute before I move on to my next step. Oh, with this color as well, I forgot it. I forgot his tail when I painted the original one and I forgot it again. <laughs> um, can I paint, oh, there's some good questions in the chat. Let me tend to those first. So can I paint white over the blue of the umbrella stripes? Um, you absolutely can. If you mean like you wanna like pretend the blue didn't happen and you want it to be completely white, um, I would wait for the blue to dry and then go over it with white. You're still going to have bleed through, and then you might have to wait for that to dry and cover it up again. So if you're kind of, the situation is, ah, I made a mistake with the blue and I want to cover it. You can absolutely cover it with white. It's just going to take several steps in letting that dry. Mm -hmm. um, Bob says, feeling very orange. <laughs> yes. Um, if it's feeling a little too orange, you can give it a little touch of white mixed in. Um, but I promise you, it, it, maybe it'll help to, to tell you that when I did the original, I also felt this is really orange, <laughs> but because of the way we're going to add some highlights and lowlights, it, it should be fine. I mean, you can't, if you look at his leg right here, I mean, this is basically like red and yellow. Um, but again, the way we're going to paint it, it's, it will come together. Okay. I just heard a bonk and my toddler cry and I'm going to go check. He's with Mimi. Everything should be fine, but I'm just going to take a little, <laughs> take a little check on him. good he's good i think he just kind of bonked his head all righty what was i saying <laughs> i don't remember 
what was I saying? Was, oh, I was tending to the questions. Um, yeah, feeling very orange. Um, I would say uh, sit tight with that. But if you, if you do want to make a change now, going over that with um, a little more white and a little more yellow added into what you've got. All right. Um, what I was saying before I saw the chat was that um, in the in the model and even in this one live in front of you, I forgot his tail twice. <laughs> so I do want to add his little tail that's sitting on top of that ledge in a little in a little curve. Okay. So with that that same orange, I'm just going to give in his little just a little curve of tail here. Let me grab some more of that paint. Something like this. Yeah, it's not going to look like much right now, but I'm just telling myself that the tail is in fact there. Okay. All right. Still looking a little weird, but hang on with me. Hang on with me a little bit more. Um, what I'm going to start to do next is adding our highlights. Okay, here's where we start to kind of take control of where these shapes are. His face, even his ears, which we haven't painted at all yet. The, the highlight on his shoulder here, even the highlight on the tail and the leg and things. So here's where we kind of start kind of sculpting him, I'll say. So with that, I'm going to use the same color for his base, but I'm going to add more white and more yellow. More white and more yellow to what I was working with. And I'm going to highlight things like his shoulder over here. I'm going to start to highlight the top of his head. His jaw, his chin. I'm even going to find those ears, these cute little ears, which are just kind of sitting flat on top of his head in this particular pose. Where else am I gonna find these highlights? On his legs down here, on his tail. All right, and again, don't don't get too um, stressed about exactness here at this point. With these highlights, we can still be very sketchy. It's still forgiving at this point. Just kind of playing around with where these highlights are. And actually, with this highlight color, I'm going to bring back those spheres for his um, hands. And they're going to be less sphere-like and a bit more awkwardly shaped because our hands are not literally spheres. So something like that. Again, we are still forgiving at this point. We're not stressing about exactness. Just starting to play with sculpting. His collar can even show, start to show up over here. All right. I want to stop here and then I'm going to talk through again what I've just done because I did that really quickly. I couldn't help myself. Um, just to recap, I've made a light, bright, highlight color version of that orange. That meant I added more white and more yellow to what I was working with. I hit the, the left side shoulder here. I hit the top of his head, his jaw, his chin. I even highlighted the top of the ears, which we haven't yet indicated. 
highlighted his tail. I started to indicate his hands here. Less like spheres, more blocky this time around. His other shoulder hanging out over here and his legs. All right, and maybe, just maybe at this point, now we can start to see a little something, something happening with our previously creepy Picasso form. All right, and I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and I'm gonna look around and see if we got any questions. See how we're doing. Again, stay with me here. Don't don't fret, don't stress too much. There's, we still got some, actually quite a bit to do with this lion. And we still have, um, we haven't, our next step is another step where we can play around and it's forgiving. It's a bit sketchy. So I don't want you to fret just yet if we're feeling stressed out about our, our lion here. And I'll pause for a minute and in about a minute, I will ask to see where uh, how we're doing if, and if we can proceed. And yes, as a reminder, don't forget to tag um, the Alumni Association and any of your posts, um, especially we love seeing those photos. So don't forget to tag um, on Instagram or Facebook, tag the Alumni Association. Perfect, yes. So I'm gonna review the places that I highlighted again, okay? Um, I started I started over here on the left shoulder, his right, or not shoulder, his arm, let's say, right by the elbow, okay? Um, his tail here and here, kind of to follow that curve. I've got the top of his head, the side of his head and his chin, tops of the ears. His other arm over here. So other arm on the right, his left. I've blocked out his fists, which are now less like spheres and more and blockier. Also his legs, down the leg here and down the leg here. All right, Tina, does that, was that helpful? Did that work? Okay, cool. All right, time to check in. Thumbs up if we are ready to rock and roll. I see a couple of thumbs in our videos. Awesome. Let me take a look at our other friends who are not showing video. Oh, I see. Oh, I love it. Thanks, Bob. Love it. See, doesn't it? Don't you feel better about the orange? All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. 
So next step, we're gonna do um, the low lights, okay? And we're going to start to um, find the, the, the outlines. And when I say outlines, I'm talking like um, in his neck, the, what do you, like the cowl, I guess, of where that costume sits on, on his body, um, the outlines of the, the fingers and hands. Um, oh, we're, Bob, they want to see yours. <laughs> so if you want to take a look at Bob's, where's Bob? I have to scroll to find him. There, oh, look at, see the, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking good. Oh, I can't wait to see these guys. I cannot wait to see these. Um, okay. What was I saying? Right. So we're working towards these, these lines, right? Now, if I can grab your attention to look at his face. So his face is where we're going to have the least amount of, I'll say, forgiveness and wiggle room, right? But here's, here's a technique to help with that. If you look at the screen right now, you see his face, you see the you know clear black eyes, black nose, black mouth. But we also have this, this um, lighter gray shadowy color. And that is me trying to find where his face is. In other words, that is me um, sketching and being playful and not fretting about perfection. And then what happens is I'm like, you know, now I know where those black eyes are going to be. Now I know where this mouth is going to be. And in the final product, it doesn't matter to me, at least <laughs> the artist, it didn't matter that I had these dark circles, right? It kind of looks, you know, on purpose, like a paint painterly choice, right? I say all that <laughs> to let you know that we still have some leeway because we are going to make this light gray, which is just that Nittany Lion orangey yellow, but with a little um, a smidgy smooch of black added to it. Just the smidgiest of smooches, just to make that a little bit um, kind of a shadowy gray color. Let me try to get myself in order here. Let's see, is this the color? I think it's a little bit too dark. I am making a mess of my counter right now. <laughs> um, let's see if this is what is going to work. So let's see if this is it. I'm gonna start with the top of his head. Eh, that's, that's a little bit darker than I want, but kind of the idea. All right, so I'm gonna sketch out the top of his head and the tops of those ears and the underneaths of those ears and just the side of his face kind of going around, okay? Um, and if you take your brush handle and find the, the middle of his head, so from top to jaw. The middle there is a pretty much where his nose is. So again, this very forgiving gray color for his nose, forgiving gray for his eyes, just kind of playing with where those are, and finding his mouth. Okay, again, very sketchy, very quick, not worried about perfection, just kind of finding the placement of things, okay? Don't worry if it looks creepy at this point. We are giving ourselves some leeway. I'm gonna find the, the curve of his hand right here. Add some, um, sketchy lines to the cowl of his neck. So his costume kind of sits on his body there. Find some wrinkles in his shoulder. And 
and find his other hand over here. There's a little shadow that we can see into his costume over here. All right, sorry, I got silent and I got lost in my in my painting here, it happens. So with that light, light gray, still very forgiving, just finding the shapes, the, the composition of his face, that nose is pretty much dead center between top of the head and bottom of the jaw. That's where his nose lives. Then I can find the sockets of his eyes right below his ears, add a little outline to his face, outlines to his fists where, um, yeah, his fists, a little bit to the cowl of his neck, wrinkles in his shoulders where the bend, the bendy parts are, the shoulders, the elbows to show the costume wrinkling there. And again, things slowly start to come together. And even now, even with our highlights and our lowlights, things might still look a little creepy. And that, and that is fine. <clears throat> Hopefully with these, this gray sketchy stuff, again, very forgiving. Now when we go over with black, we feel a little bit better about it. Now, um, Something that I will add right now because I forgot to is the um, scarf, which for me is kind of, you don't see the whole, the whole thing because it's kind of falling in his lap here behind his hand, but I am going to indicate where that is. And how do I want to do that? Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to. grab a little bit of blue so I know where this thing is. And I and you can see it better too if I just use some blue here. Something like that. So again, I'm just seeing a little bit of his scarf because um, it's hiding in his lap pretty much and under his cowl. And again, because I like a darker blue, I'm gonna add a little bit of black there. And then we'll add that white later on. Okay, now with a a darker gray or even a pure black, I can start to um, fill in his facial features because now I have a, a better idea of where, where they are. So I've got his eyes. And his nose. mouth and you can I'm using just the corner of my larger brush here but if you want to go to a smaller brush um absolutely feel free Yeah, 
Yes. Alrighty, something like that. And then with those that that black, I can um find his fingers and his fist. Let's see, and the, the shadow of his costume, the sleeve meaning. Let's see where else fingers. Oh yeah, this hand is important. This hand is holding an ice cream. Let me make sure we get that in. This hand is pointing at us. I'm not gonna worry too much about accuracy of fingers here. Just gonna get the general idea. Whoops. Eight. All right, I'm gonna pause here and basically give a little um, recap of what I've done. So after those gray, sketchy low lights, um, I did add um, the blue stripes of the scarf that is, the whole scarf is not totally visible because it's like falling in his lap. It's coming through his cowl and behind his hand. And then with, um, a dark, dark color, pra a practically pure black. I went in and added his eyes, his nose, his mouth. And with that black, I went over any of those um, uh, gray lines that I wanted to emphasize more, especially the, the um, sleeve, the shadow of his sleeve where his hand is coming out and you can see kind of into the, into the costume. I've added black very sketchy black lines for uh, indicating the fingers. Okay. Um, the tail, shadow of the tail, shadow of his leg um, as it sits on that wall, the shadow in between his legs, excuse me. Um, the, the folds in the costume at the bendy parts like the elbow and the shoulder. And yeah, that, that is pretty much that. That is pretty much that. Technical terms all the time. Um, I do want to take a pause here because I know that this is the point where we're like, oh gosh, you know. Um, oh yes, I will. I just see a note in the chat to pause a little bit, and I don't know what when that came in. Um, what time is it now? Hmm. All right, so hopefully um, I can pause a little bit more. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, I do I do wanna pause here. I know that this is, we're at a point in the painting where it's like, oh God, this is where it's supposed to look like something and it doesn't look like something. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, so don't, don't panic, stay with me, continue to stay with me. We still have a couple of little details to add. Okay, um, again, it still might look weird at this point. We don't have we don't have uh, perspective yet. We're like kind of zoomed in on like all the things we think are wrong with this. I promise you, if we let this breathe, take a step back, look at it tomorrow, 
you're going to be really impressed with what you've done. Having said all that, um, if anyone has a question that I can help with, please, please do let me know. Um, I am going to take, um, take a little walk around the room here. See if anybody is ready to show what they've got. I can't wait to see these. Oh my gosh. Stop it, Bob. Look at you. Oh my gosh. I love it. Oh my gosh. Heather. Yes. Anybody else? Tracy. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. The hands. The hands look great. Anybody else? Heather, good. There's Bob Goodhart. These are looking, I'm telling you, they look like the Nittany Lion, right? Like it's it's totally recognizable. Even if you don't think it looks like a picture that you see or a photo. Oh, I saw that Karen looking good. I just saw it for a second and she put it away. Uh <laughs> Oh, there's another one. Oh, he looks so cute. He's got the best smile. Oh my goodness. And I see Marty's, Marty's showing. Love it. You guys, these look great. And again, I have, I have the, um, what's the word? The privilege of perspective, right? I don't see every little thing that you think is wrong with it. I see the big picture. Oh, Sarah, that he looks so happy. I love it. Sherry looking good. Oh, these look so fun. They look so happy. That is great. Love, love, love. All right, I'm gonna take another little pause in case people are still working. All right. And basically, our last little things here are going to be the um, the white of his, for me, the white of his uh, scarf, his teeth, his chompers, and the ice cream cone, very important, right? The ice cream cone will also prime in white first and then um, add our ice cream flavor. Mine's pink. I don't know what ice cream flavor that would be but that was in the photo I was working with. All right, how are we doing um, um, KRB who asked for a few more minutes? Are, are, we, are we okay? Do you have any more questions? Thumbs up from KRB. Oh yeah, this is, oh yeah. Um, Sandy's saying that she's making hers uh, bittersweet mint. So totally, you can absolutely make your ice cream flavor your favorite. My favorite is death by chocolate, but I kind of like the look of the pink in, in the painting. Also don't want to risk it looking like a poop emoji. If I do brown, um, but I do I do like uh, the way the pink ice cream looks. All right, so yeah, go ahead and paint your favorite uh, flavor. For my next move, I'm gonna move to a, my smaller brush, my smaller brush for some of these straight white touches, which is for me the stripes of this uh, scarf. Stripes of the scarf here. And I'm going to prime, as I say, the ice cream cone. So priming it in white means that um, the colors that I put on top can sit nice and clearly. So we've got just the very top of the cone and then a nice 
creamery serving size of ice cream. You can go bigger than that. Okay. And his chompers. He's got these great chompers. So his his teeth, his canine, canines, would they be called? I don't know. I feel like that's a dog thing. Oh, we have canines too, right? I don't know. I don't know anything about teeth. But the upper jaw has um, his teeth wider than the bottom jaw. So I just kind of keep that in mind um, as I'm painting those in. Chompers, here we go. Ooh, those are look kind of terrifyingly pointy. So we can kind of round those out. There we go. Something like that. Something like that. All righty. I'm feeling good. All right, I primed my cone. And all I'm going to do for my cone is just a little, little touch of yellow at the base there. And then try to feel like I'm getting a little bit lost here with my camera angle. Okay. So just a little, a little touch of yellow at the base there. And then for me, I guess, I guess I'm doing strawberry. So pink. A little touch of red and white. And I can give a little texture action here to my ice cream. Oh, that looks good. Good, I mean delicious good. <laughs> like I want some ice cream now. All righty. Yum, 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 yum. I want ice cream. All right. That is pretty much all she wrote here for our Nittany Lion holding an ice cream cone. I do want to take a minute or two just to make sure we're all doing okay. See if there are any questions. See how we're doing. I'm just gonna try to get as many screens visible as possible. See what's going on. All right. Any any questions for me in the chat? Or you can unmute yourself if you have any questions. But I I I have a feeling that everyone is kind of doing better than they thought they would. That always seems to <laughs> I see someone shaking her head. Like, no. Oh no. I promise you tomorrow it'll look better and also take a photo of it on your phone they they tend to look really good on on a on a photo hey abby are you still there i'm trying to remember when our first zoom um paint was it's I all think, a blur. Yeah, I think it was, I want to say 2021, 2020. Yeah, I, I don't even remember like what the painting was. I can go back and look. 
Yeah, I'm so curious because it feels like it was like a hundred years ago, but also like two years ago. Was it? I thought it was October. Jody says it was a Halloween cat on a pumpkin. And I my my feeling was was it October? So maybe was it 2020? Gosh. Yes, I remember the Halloween cat. And we put like the Nittany Lion logo on the pumpkin. Is that right? Goodness. All right. Oh yeah, hold them up. It's my favorite part. Bob, it looks great. I love your ice cream. Yes, Elizabeth, Marion. Oh my gosh, look at them. They look so good. Oh my gosh, they look so good. They are all absolutely recognizable, right? Step one, everyone is gonna know what this is, right? Step two, they look happy, they look fun. Oh my gosh, these look great. Love them. Oh my gosh, you guys did a great job. Let me see if there's anything going on in the chat. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. Wait, was that? No. Who's the, who's shaking her head? Marty and Teresa. Was it Teresa shaking her head? Let me see this, Teresa. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So fun. So, so fun. So gosh, we're coming up on what? Four, depending I'm, on I'm going to stick with nursing. Okay. <laughs> I got to tell you, Teresa. When I do private pain events, um, nurses are the, the hardest on themselves. They, they, they're like all y'all are perfectionists. So I'm not surprised. Oh, these look so fun. Love it. Diana Clark showing off their painting there. It's so good. Wonderful. All right, folks. I'm going to thank you all for painting with me tonight. Hopefully you all stayed cool wherever you were, at least in State College. It was a hot one. I think we're all around the country. It was a hot one today. Uh, thank you for painting with me this evening. Our Nittany Lion holding the ice cream cone. You did it. This was another challenging one, but they look recognizable. They look fun. Okay. Hopefully you learned a, a new technique or two here. And Abby, thank you so much for having me as always. And I hope you all have a great night and we'll see you in a few months, I guess, for our next one. And of course, tag those photos on your social media and stay tuned for the video in case you wanna share it with other folks or if you wanna um, catch up on something you missed. Abby, anything else? That's everything. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks you everyone. Have a great night. Have a great night, everyone.